I'm a professor at the University of Michigan, where my work is focused on computer security, especially as it applies to problems of uh, broad importance in society. Um, I'm interested in the way computer security and public policy interact, and that leads to all sorts of interesting questions, uh, ranging from DRM to electronic voting to uh, uh, privacy and even uh, anti-censorship. Um, I've done work in this in, in all of these areas for uh, for a number of years now with my students at Michigan and before that with Ed Felton at Princeton. In 2010, before the general election, Washington, D.C., the, the District of Columbia, uh, decided to do a trial of a new system for Internet voting. Uh, they wanted to have a system where absentee and military voters overseas could vote on a website and return their ballots digitally. Um, unlike in the past, city officials went to researchers uh, who work in the voting field and asked whether uh, uh, they had any advice for implementing Internet voting. And uh, the answer they got was a resounding, don't implement Internet voting. We don't know how to make the technology secure today. Um, but D.C. decided to do it anyway. And as a compromise, uh, they decided to have a public trial. Uh, they announced that they would hold a mock election a uh, few days before opening the system to real voters, and in the mock election, anyone in the public who wanted to try to hack the system could take part. Now, it's not every day that you get an opportunity to hack into government computers without being arrested. Uh, so my students and I, because of our interest in Internet voting, decided to take them up on the challenge. We started looking at the system, and um, after a few hours of, of investigating, um, we noticed a bug, a vulnerability, um, that ultimately allowed us to take full control of the system. Um, uh, this was a problem in the way it processed ballot files. There was an un, uh, unsanitized string from user input that, could be uh, that, that would be executed as a shell command. Uh, so it's something called a script injection vulnerability. Um, what we found was that within uh, 48 hours of the start of the trial, we were able to take full control of the server. Um, uh, uh, we stole all of the votes uh, by changing them to our own ballots, uh, where all of the candidates uh, we voted for were uh, write-ins for evil robots and AIs from sci-fi or the movies. Bender for school board, for example. We also were able to figure out how every voter voted, violating the secret ballot, and we changed the code in the system to rig any other votes that were cast later so that they would vote for the same evil robots. Lastly, as a uh, kind of calling card, you might say, we changed the uh, thank you page that shows up after a voter voted so that after a 15-second delay, the user would hear the University of Michigan fight song, Hail to the Victors, playing from the computer speakers. So this was our way of making it slightly plausible that the election officials would detect the attack. Nevertheless, it was almost two business days before they figured out that the system had been owned. And even then, it was only because another tester wrote an email to them saying, the system looks pretty good, but I don't like the music that plays at the end. It's distracting. DC's reaction was to take down the system and end the test. And they, they brought it out a few days later for the actual election with the digital ballot return feature removed. So voters could still download a blank ballot and send it back in the mail. Um, this seems like a pretty reasonable compromise that's uh, fairly secure and also helps to let overseas absentee voters file their, their ballots in time. What I conclude from this is, first, that uh, the web architectures we use today are just too fragile uh, to allow Internet voting to be secure today. When big companies like, like Google and, uh, and, and Twitter get hacked, when uh, the Pentagon gets hacked by, by outside, uh, uh, outside forces, there's just no way that municipal governments are going to be able to implement and run voting systems that are going to be secure. The problem with the architecture is that small mistakes can often have very big consequences. In this case, uh, in one line of the system, the programmer had used double quotes instead of single quotes, and that was enough to let someone steal the election. It's amazing when, when problems that small can have such severe consequences, um, there's just no way that real programmers are going to be able to get everything right, however competent they are. The other takeaway from this is that voting is a much harder problem than things like e even e-commerce or online banking. 
uh, a banking system. You can log every transaction. You can reverse transactions when they're determined to be fraudulent. You can uh, allow the, uh, uh, the user to have a receipt as proof of what happened. But with voting, we have a secret ballot, and that secret ballot guarantee is what protects everyone from vote buying and coercion. And uh, uh, so there's no way to use these same kinds of logging features. Having a system that's both secure and preserves the, the integrity of the secret ballot um, is something we don't know how to do well over the Internet today. Making Internet voting secure is going to require fundamental advances in computer security. Um, uh, you have to protect servers from remote attacks, potentially from well-funded adversaries anywhere in the world. Um, we saw incoming attack traffic from uh, as far away as Iran and China. You also have to protect clients from malware that could be trying to change the voter's vote. And you have to protect the system against phishing and attempts to just trick the voter into giving away their password or trying to vote on, on the wrong site. These are some of the hardest problems we face today. And uh, uh, that's why I think it's going to be decades, if ever, before we're able to vote over the Internet securely. Internet voting has its advantages. There are, uh, uh, it's more convenient, certainly. Perhaps more people would vote if they had the ability to vote online. Uh, but the fundamental problem is that uh, if you have the ability to vote, but someone else has the ability to change your vote to, uh, uh, to anything they want, um, that's not just negating your vote, that's uh, threatening the, the core of democracy in this country. So there are trade-offs involved um, between uh, uh, making voting easy for everybody and making voting secure for the country, and it's ultimately a policy decision which is more valuable. But I think it's important that uh, uh, everybody, including the decision makers and election officials, understands the technical trade-offs and the security risks involved. There's an opportunity here for all of your readers um, to help uh, get involved in the Internet voting debate. Uh, tell your friends and neighbors what the risks are. Uh, tell them about the security problems that have been found before and about the reasons why maybe it doesn't quite make sense yet um, to vote online the way we want to do everything else online. Technical people, people with security interests are going to be the opinion makers here. And so I think it's especially important that they become familiar with the debate. So it was tremendous fun hacking the Washington, D.C. system, um, but uh, I, I'm afraid it's also very depressing. We, uh, we hope that uh, this serves as uh, uh, an important data point in the security of, of Internet voting systems and, uh, uh, and also that it just helps raise awareness about uh, when computers can uh, be useful and, and when we really probably should be voting on something else.